All right, I've got everything. My bag's all packed, Jeremy. I'm ready for my first meet of the swim season. <sighs> oh, uh, hey, if it's your first meet, get excited. We're gonna have so much fun this weekend at the meet, but you should probably know what we put in a swim bag before we go to the meet. This is not a real swim bag, but just go on a little imagination adventure with me, okay? First thing you need is obviously a bag big enough to put all of your swimming supplies in, okay? It should probably be at least as big as your school backpack. Um, first things first, you need a Bullets team suit. Some of you might not have one yet. If you don't, it'll be there at the meet. If not, make sure you at least have a Speedo suit of some kind that you can wear at the meet, okay? Most folks also like to bring another suit just as a backup in case. Probably a good idea. Uh, second thing you're gonna need, obviously, Bullets cap and goggles. Also a good idea to bring an extra set of goggles. In fact, bring that extra set with you when you go to your race so that it's there in case the first pair breaks. After goggles, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you also have at least two towels. Most meets, you're gonna want more than one towel. First one's gonna get wet after your first or second event. Have a backup towel so that you can stay dry. Sessions at a meet run a while and you wanna stay dry the whole time. Make sure that you've got clothes to stay warm on the pool deck. Um, even though it's not winter yet, pool deck can still get pretty cold when you're wet after a swim. Make sure you've got enough clothes that you can stay warm. Uh, and then finally, food and water. Swim meets can last up to four hours. You wanna make sure that you have enough snacks that three hours from after warmups, you're not just sitting there very, very hungry and very, very sad. And then you want water. You want either water or whatever sports drink you prefer and bring at least you know, 20 to 40 fluid ounces of that. Better to be over-prepared than under-prepared. So bring whatever you would like to drink throughout the day so that you can stay hydrated later on, okay? Kind of a big list of stuff. Make sure that you don't forget any of this by doing it the day before. Just set aside five minutes, put together a list of all the stuff you're gonna wanna have the next day at the meet, put it in your bag, and then you can just go to sleep, wake up the next morning and it's there, all right? That's what you want in your bag. One thing out of the way. Okay, so we've got our bag packed. One thing set aside. Now, what do you actually do once you've made it to the meet? Well, first of all, before you even leave, make sure you check out our website, look at the meet page, and know exactly what time you should be on deck, okay? We always list the time that we want you to be on deck ready to get in for warm-ups, okay? By that time, you want to not only be at the location of the meet, but be on deck ready to go. So check the website first before you do anything else. Make sure you leave plenty of time, especially if the meet is a little bit farther away, traffic can be crazy on the weekend. So make sure that you get to the pool on time, ready to go. The first thing you wanna do when you set, uh, step inside whatever facility the meet is located at is find positive check-in. Positive check-in is always the first thing to find. Uh, it'll usually be in a hallway just outside the pool somewhere, but ask around, somebody will direct you to it. You're gonna find your name, you're gonna highlight it, and from there you're gonna go to the pool deck and you're gonna find your coach. If you can't find your name at check-in, keep looking around. Sometimes it'll be on a different sheet than you might think it is. Uh, and if you still can't find your name, then go to your coach and they'll help you out, okay? Regardless, after you do positive check-in, the next place to go, is to your coach. Your coach will tell you where they want you to be and when. Uh, go to the team area as well and you can set your stuff down and you can hang out until we're ready to get in the water for warm-ups. Your coach will tell you where you're going for warm-ups as well as what time. Uh, warm-ups typically last somewhere between 15 minutes to 25-30 minutes on the upper end. After that you'll have some time to go back to the team area, dry off, put on some clothes, and wait until the meet actually starts. Swimmers, make sure that you see your coaches before and after every race. They are the last person you should see before you line up, and then the first person you should see after the race. After you talk to your coach, go ahead and find your parents and you can hang out with them and talk with them as much as you like, okay? Parents, after you drop your kid off and they are going to the team area and finding their coach, your role at that point is basically to go to the spectator area and be the biggest supporter, cheerer, lover of your kids the rest of the way but allow your kids a little bit of space so that they can talk to their coaches before and after their race. Make sure that that direct line in between races is always happening, okay? In fact, 
per USA Swimming rules, parents are actually not allowed on the pool deck. Um, so something to keep in mind is that it's important for you to remain in the spectator area unless, of course, you are volunteering at one of our Bullets hosted meets. In which case, as soon as you can, locate whatever area you need to be in. Sometimes you will need to be there before the meet starts. Um, sometimes it'll be earlier rather than later. So figure that out. Um, but otherwise, try and stay off the pool deck uh, because that is actually a USA Swimming rule. And that's about it. You're gonna do your races. You're gonna be awesome. You're gonna have fun. And then you'll get out of there, okay? So uh, for all the coaches uh, from Bullet staff, good luck this weekend. Race hard. And uh, let's have some fun. <laughs>